So hello and welcome to another episode of NCA Chats. Hope everyone is well and have enjoyed the mini segments we've been doing on ncarugby.com over the last few weeks. Do check out our latest uh, video and podcast we did with uh, John Inverdale, who is the new NCA chairman. We do look forward to, to working with John. It was great to catch up with him last week and introduce ourselves to what we've been doing on the website and looking ahead to the future show. Cheers for John. Uh, to John for his time on that one. But today it's great to welcome our next guest to the show. It's Rosalind Parks at Neville Edwards. And I was doing a bit of research, Nev, before I got you on. And the last time we did an interview was way back in 2016. And I think you just signed a two, uh, a two-year deal with Sale. So it's been, been quite a while. Yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been a long time. A lot's happened in, in that time. I've been in very different places all over the, <laughs> the country. So, um, so, yeah, no, but it's been good. It's been great. So. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to speak to us today, Nev, and we will talk about you uh, returning to Roslyn Park, if you like, and having a, a solid season last year with the National One side. But Nev has kindly agreed to come on today to talk about, I mean, one of the most important issues, not only in sport, but in society as a whole at the moment, it's the Black Lives Matter movement, which is so prominent. And I guess, Nev, the fact that a lot of people have been talking about this at the moment, and obviously sport is making a stance on it as well, we've seen in the Premier League, that it is a movement that is delivering a powerful message, which is important at the moment. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really important. And um, I'm, I'm pretty happy that these conversations are starting to happen now because the, this kind of thing has been happening for a very, very long time now. Um, and it's kind of like just been brushed under the carpet by a lot of people. So it's good that those conversations are opening up now and um, people are starting to, to realise that the, the, this is affecting black lives and this is affecting um, people's lives in general. So um, it is very important that we do talk about it. Yeah, and it's clearly important there, but also is there a kind of negative side of it to, to it as well? Because we're living in 2020 at the moment, but we're still having to, to talk and campaign about this. Yeah, it, that that is a negative. Um, it is a bit frustrating for for me as a as a black human being that I still kind of have to justify um, things and explain myself and things like that. Um, but it is good. We're on a good track that we are starting to make progress and have these conversations. But it is it is negative that we are in two thousand and twenty and we're still kind of in a dated era, if you know what I mean. So so yeah, but. Hopefully things will improve and we'll we'll get to where where we need to be. Um, there's no real there's no real place for people being segregated in this world, in my opinion. No matter what your race is, no matter what your disability is, or anything like that, it, it's it it shouldn't it shouldn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more with you there, Neville. And in terms of what we've been seeing at the moment on, on social media, I mean, you've got guys in the Premier League such as Raheem Sterling and Marcus Rashford who have been so so powerful about this and is it great to see sort of sports stars and I mean it, it will probably happen across the world of sport using their platform as, of social media because they do have such a big reach at the moment. Yeah 100% like they, they've all got big big followings um, and they're all doing like real good meaningful things to kind of um, be a voice for black people kind of um, in, in this situation and I think that's that's a great advantage that they have um, and they're using that quite well. So as, as long as that kind of continues and not only does it continue, people actually listen to what they're saying and react to what they're saying in a positive manner, then I think we can really, really change the world in, in that sense. Yeah, it's, it's important there that you, you say sort of change the world and people react in there. And it's, it's everyone, isn't it? It has to be a collective movement at the moment because we've seen in the past in sport, particularly you have sort of the kick it out campaign and things like that. And, they're all there. They're all there to, to try and promote the message and, and kick racism out of, of football and, and sport. But it's about everyone bringing together and getting really behind this movement. Yeah, definitely. There, ha there has to be a reaction. There has to be something positive to come from this, um, which is why I kind of see, I, I don't agree with it, but I see why there's so much kind of, um, kind of, attitude from from people on on the streets in these in these protests like people are really passionate about these situations so they do want something to happen people don't want to stand back anymore and and let it just happen like th there needs to be a change mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and, and bringing it back to kind of 
rugby neb and I've, I've seen the rfu has said that more needs to be done in the wider community to to educate people so that must have to start from from a top down and as a player who, who's played across different levels of the game in this country do you agree with that that this education around sort of racism has to has to start from sort of the top of the rfu and filter down to the young kids who are, who are starting out playing the game yeah definitely it does it it does need to come from the top um Everyone kind of says says that from from the beginning, um, and I think it's really important that that RFU do kind of use their position to educate everybody and let everyone know that this is an issue in sport, um, not just rugby, others other sports as well. And I think um, they need they really need to enforce that and really push push through with it as much as they possibly can. Um, and as long as as long as they're making the effort to do it, that is something that's gonna it's gonna help. Yeah, so, yeah, totally yeah. agree. Totally agree, Nevin. And in terms of yourself, I mean, Matt, as I mentioned at the top, you, you know, you played at the top of the uh, of the game in the Premiership with Sale, and you've played in the Championship as well as the National Leagues. Have you ever felt, sort of, during your career, that you've been marginalised at all, and sort of opportunities for for people of different races have fallen into their path rather, rather than yours? Um, kind of, yeah. There's the old kind of cliche. Um, thing that people used to say that that black guys can't catch they're not good at passing um, let's put him on the wing um, because he's fast or whatever um, I I know and have played with a lot of black players who have got really really good skills um, but you just kind of see in this generation of rugby at the moment you don't see many black fly halves you don't see many black scrum halves you don't see many many black generals um, and that might be because that particular person isn't good enough for that position or there's someone better and that is the case. But it's kind of like when I started playing rugby straight away, I got put on the wing because I had a bit of pace. Um, and for me, that kind of worked out because of that. But there are so many other players who have got really good skills that could play in different positions. Um, so, yeah, I kind of have experienced that. Um, and kind of like from a fan perspective, um, I've experienced it playing on the pitch and, um, and, and having fans charting kind of horrible things at me before, which, because I was so young at the time, um, I was like, what, 21, 22, um, I, I could hear it and everything, but I was so wrapped up in the game that I was just like, do you know what, I'll just forget, on, forget that and get on with, with the job I have to do and not really listen to it and 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 bring it into my mind um but now when i look back on it i'm just like i think to myself like how how is that allowed how, why has no one else kind of recognized that because people did recognize it at the time um why is no one else kind of speaking up for for this matter um so yeah so it is it, it it's a sad thing that that has happened but like i said before it is in quite a lot of sports um i think footballers um at a top level, they experience it quite a lot. And um, and again, nothing really has been said. So we're in a position now where we, we should be voicing that opinion and voicing what what is really happening out there. And you, you touch on sort of your personal experience there, Neville. I mean, does it show how much this movement needs to be properly you know talked about and everyone needs to get behind it because you said there that you sort of said kind of well if these things are being said to me but at the time it was like well they're being said to me let's leave it there but now if, so if that happened to you again it'd be probably more of a thing you were like hang on a minute we're in a society now we're in 2020 more needs to be done yeah yeah definitely i mean like at that time like i said i, I was quite young so i didn't really react to it but also at the same time in in rugby you're kind of taught to put everything to the side and just get on with the job that you have to do regardless of what it is so that kind of like was my mindset then however if something like that was to happen now um because we're so far on like i mean we're a decade past that and it's still still going on um i would definitely be walking off the pitch and like speaking to the ref or having something done about that because that's it's just not acceptable i'm there to do a job everyone else on the pitch is there to do a job and, and create entertainment for, for the crowd and everything. And that's not something that you should have to, you should have to experience whilst you're, whilst you're playing and doing something you love. 
Yeah, and, and, and just finally on this, Ned, I mean, what would you like to see sort of the first steps be done in terms of rugby? Is it like we go back to what we just said a couple of minutes ago, that it has to start from the RFU maybe taking a stance or is it maybe schools have to educate more about black history and go from there to, to make these kids more educated if they do go into the game? Yeah, I feel, I think schools do play a massive part. Um, like for me at, at my school, I didn't learn that much black history in, in school. Um, I learned a little bit but not enough. Um, but my dad taught me quite a bit and I did quite a lot of research on it um, when, I, when I was younger. But it is something that should, should be there because if you think about um, November the 11th at 11 o'clock, we always have that minute sli silence for, for World War, um, which I really, really respect. And I think that's, it's a great thing and we should respect that. Um, however, it, when you've encouraged other cultures to come over into your into your country, um, you do have to respect their their beliefs as well. And I think that's part of the education through schools and and everything that can help. So if if kids are taught about Black history in schools, they will understand what we're feeling. They might not fully understand it, but they will kind of understand the journey that has that has happened what's gone on in the past the problem is that people don't actually know what's what's gone on in the past unless they've they've educated themselves so yeah that is that is a massive thing and then that would filter again into into rugby and and having the rfu kind of enforce that and doing things to um to to kind of disregard that that bad behavior it would it would really help yeah yeah, very strong point uh, there, Nev. And hopefully we are seeing this movement around Black Lives Matter. Hopefully it's going to be sustained and hopefully we do sort of kick racism out of society and in sport in particular. And, and Nev, if you don't mind sort of going on to actually on the field stuff with, with Roslyn Park last season, I know it was another solid season for you guys. And unfortunately due to the COVID-19 situation, the, the season was cut short. And I know you're once again in a title race with Richmond. I mean, how did the club look back on the season and, and it, I mean the dust has settled on the decision now but um, how do you overall assess what happened towards the end of the year? Yeah well I mean it, it kind of is what it is um, we as a club were obviously wanting to get promoted and be in that top spot um, I think um, in terms of results we probably could have done better um, against other teams and really solidified that position um because if you look at things we beat richmond twice this year and in my opinion we are definitely the best the best team in the league but then you go away to blackheath and lose they come to you and you lose you go away to Reading rams and you lose again um that is a it's a bit of a frustrating situation but that that is sport sometimes and you've just kind of got to got to get on with it and and um and do the best that you can but i think we had we, we had a solid season um, a few disappointments, but I think we'll bounce back and, and, and be pushing for that top spot again. Yeah, when, when I said at the start that we, we had a bit of an interview in 2016 with, with you, Nev, you sort of talked about Roslyn Park being your boyhood club in, in that chat. So what was the main reason for you going back to, to Roslyn a couple of, was it a couple of years ago you were back there? Yes, I've been back, that, that would be my second season back now. Um, yeah. My first season I had a shoulder injury, so I only played half of the season. Um, but like, like I've always said, Roslyn Park is really close to my heart and it's somewhere I've always enjoyed playing my rugby. Um, and when I came back from France and I couldn't get anything else in the Premiership, I kind of thought to myself, right, um, I'll go back to London and I will... I'll go back and play for, for Roslyn Park if they'll have me. And luckily, Dom Chavu's always looked out for me and um, Sean Justice when he was there as well. So it was kind of like an ethos that I would always, always go back to Roslyn Park because they were always like my boyhood club. So, so yeah. And has it been pleasing as well, Nev, since you, you've come back into the team that you've, they've been really challenging towards the, the top of National World? Because I know, speaking to the club a couple of years ago, it was sort of, mid-table and sort of knocking on the door of that sort of top three, top four. But now you guys have, you know, finished second and second and second, I think it was, or second and third the last few years. So that must be pleasing that you are making those small steps towards challenging for the title and maybe promotion to the championship. Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't know how many, I don't think I've got enough fingers to, to put <laughs> up to say how, how many times I've finished second or third at this club, which is a bit, a bit frustrating. But um, yeah, it's, it's great to be pushing, pushing for the top again. 
Um, and if you look at the personnel in our in our team, um, I think we've 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 got some great quality players that can can get us into that top spot. So um, I think it's it's a case of us just coming together collectively and and putting in a bit more effort to get to get to that spot. So um, so yeah. And and in terms of yourself, Neville, at the risk of making you sound like you're really really old but I know you've played at a number of uh, different clubs and how much do you take from that experience when you did come back to Roslyn Park last year because like I said before you played at say you played in championship so did you learn a lot from from your time away from the club in those sort of three four year gap? Yeah I learned, learned a lot actually um, playing playing at that level is really intense um, I think training is probably the toughest thing because um like my mentor at the time was Danny Soprano, who's a really good friend of mine, and he would not allow me to be to be off it at training. I literally had to be firing on all cylinders, just as as if it was a match day, every single training session. Um, so that's something that I kind of took into in, into this level when I've come back and kind of kept that in my personality, just because it's very important to train how you, how you play. Um, and it is hard to do that at, at this level because you're, you've obviously got your job outside of that and then you've got your rugby. So it is hard to kind of constantly switch from that mindset of work into rugby and still have that really great driving force when you've had a long day um, working and everything. So it is tough to do that, but that is part of the challenge. And um, I've kind of enjoyed, enjoyed taking that on and having that little battle with myself this season. So, yeah. And I was going to come on to, to Danny Cipriani because you did mention him in that interview where a few years ago. How much did, did he sort you mentioned that how well he did in terms of keeping you grounded and then keeping you focused? But how much do you do you take from what you learned from into, into playing on a Saturday afternoon at the moment? Um quite quite a lot to be honest. Um he taught me so many little things. Even even when we were younger playing at school, he would always be giving me pointers. Um and because of like playing playing with him again and looking out for little things that he would tell me to do for example like just keeping an eye on the 10 um the number 10 what when you're in certain positions and reading their body language to see where and when they're going to kick and see and look where their eyes are um and just keep watching their mannerisms and how they shape their body and, and things like that so those are things that i really really look out for and they it helped me with my positioning quite a bit which people have told me in the past was a was a weakness in in my in my game, so um, that's something that's that's really really helped me. Yeah, and I think like everyone, Danny will be eager for for rugby to come back sooner rather than later. Never, and I know um, community clubs and teams in national leagues have been able to return to training over the last couple of weeks. So, what's what sort of the plan being at, at Rosslyn Park for you guys at the moment? Um, I mean, at the at the moment, we're still trying to um, to find our feet. The gym's open at the moment. Um, they, we have had conversations about possibly training in group, groups of sixes um, and adhering to the guidelines. But again, it's a little bit of a difficult situation because although I'm on furlough, there are still lots of boys in the team who are still working. So it's kind of waiting for rugby to have like a set date as of when we're gonna when we're gonna return, um, and then kind of putting our training in place around that. I think. Um, all the coaches have kind of said like it would be a little bit ridiculous to be bringing us in now um, just to just to, to, to do fitness and stuff like that. Like that is a classic case of overtraining. Um, and I don't think a lot of the boys would <laughs> would appreciate that either. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just we're just kind of like waiting for for announcements, announcements to happen and kind of um, put put something in in place. Yeah, and you mentioned before we started recording as well, Ned, that it's been quite a long time uh, that you haven't played rugby. Obviously, March was the, when the season was curtailed, so you're going into three months. Though. So I guess I know you, you say there that you're waiting for guidelines and the government to come and make announcements, but you'll be probably itching to get back to training, even though it might be fitness work. Yeah, definitely. Like, I'm, I miss having a ball in my hands and I miss kind of like being around the lads and having a bit of banter and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I literally can't wait for it to kind of... Um, to start up again um it's been it's been quite a long time so and I, I know quite a few of the boys that I've spoken to are feeling the same as well 
Um, although at the beginning it was nice to kind of have a rest because you know this league is a it, it is a very very long season and if you're playing every single every single week it can get very tiring. Um, I think it, it's over like roughly about 30 games that we play in in the season. So um, it was nice to have the rest, but it would be good to get, <laughs> get a ball back in your hands. Yeah, and, and just just finally from from me, Nav, I mean. I know we don't know when the season's going to start again for, for 2020, 2021, but have you guys sort of given yourselves a really good platform to work off with what you've been able to achieve over the last sort of 12 months? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think with um, the, the coaching staff that we have at the moment, we we have created quite a good little bubble. Um, like I was telling you before, we've got a quality side. Um, and although this period has been a difficult period um financially for everybody um i think the club is still in it still in a great place um which is which is really really important um for them to give the players the the foundation to play on and kind of the the relaxation to go out there and do what we have to do um so i think we're we're still in a great great place um a lot of the boys are staying we still got a really strong squad so i think we can um go ahead and 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 challenge for the when when the season restarts, whatever that might be. So, yeah, 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 definitely, no, definitely. Well, hopefully, and I'm sure Roslyn Park will be challenging towards the top of National One once again next year when the, the season does get eventually up and running. Well, it's been brilliant to chat to you to, once again, Nev. Really appreciate your time on all things Roslyn Park. And of course, Black Lives Matter as well. So thanks very much for giving us your time and opinions on that. No worries. Cheers, Chris. Thanks for having me. No problem at all, Nev. And we'll be keeping doing these NCA rugby chats over the next few weeks. Obviously, as Nev said, said there, Roslyn Park aren't back in training properly at the moment, but some clubs are, so we'll be keeping an eye on their progress as well. So many thanks again to Nevin. That has been another NCA Rugby Chats. <laughs>